this week on Not Your Average Fangirls. Tin's like, oh yeah, my great grandma is Chinese. Oh really? Wavy. <laughs> <laughs> Dreamsins demand a fixed union and a world tour. South Club begs for every girl's forgiveness. And the issues surrounding X1 and Amber sparks a huge debate. Check it out. What's up, you guys? We're Not Your Average Fangirls. Back with another week of k pop -ness. It's your girl, Kat, and I am currently enjoying a bowl of mac and cheese. Hello, everybody. Hey. <laughs> also, I love Park Junhee. Thank you. Hey, guys. It's Cynthia. I'm still in my When This Fails, I'll Never Shut Up. This week, I'm especially missing Raven's voice. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's Terika, and um, I'm currently in shambles. I saw Super M a couple days ago. <laughs> and then... Now I'm questioning everything about my K-pop life, so there's that. She saw Tay humping the floor, <laughs> and she changed. She's a changed woman now. No, I saw Beckham perform "You in Village," and I said, "Girl, I'm going back to my EXO roots." <laughs> so Beckham, <laughs> Beckham is now my new body. <laughs> Plus, she saw Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> oh my god. I was hyping him so hard. Everyone was looking at me like, girl, all he did was say hi. So I was just like, your point, bars. You gotta hype up your man. Hello. Bars. <laughs> bars. 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 And hello, everybody. This is Carolina. What exciting thing do I have to say? Oh, my God. It was yu gi birthday oh, yesterday. Yeah. Happy birthday, baby. Happy birthday to you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, dear yu gi -Oh. Happy birthday to you, bitch. <laughs> anyway, Victon got their first win. <laughs> and we manifested that, bitch. <laughs> We've only uh, been saying that they deserve their first win since they announced that they were going to come back. And look at that now. We've been saying that they I need their first win since that. they debuted. Since forever. Since they breathed. Since they were birthed, I was screaming first win. <laughs> Since they they came birth. out of their mama and I was like, don't sing. Get it. Grand prize. They're finally getting what they deserve. I'm so finally, happy for them. And we sobbed. When Sunset came out of the womb, that first cry after the doctor went, I was like, wow. Grand. <laughs> Amazing. You know what's funny is that I was at work and I saw that they had gotten their first win. And I literally, I called Kat and she hung up on me. I texted Kat, no reply. I texted Cynthia, no reply. I messaged in the cacao, no reply. I was just like, damn, these bitches really in deep sleep. No, I did. I woke up late and I was like, fuck, I'm late. And then like, I'm trying to like run and get ready. And then I see the chat. Like I see just Carolina screaming, victim, victim. I was like, wait, what? And then I read it and I was like, oh my God, I need to hurry up and run. And then Kat woke up and I told told her we were screaming and I then died. we sobbed it was instant <laughs> cynthia like i didn't even reach for my phone she was like cat and i was like what she was I'm like so running like, around yeah, she's like she's like running everywhere like a fucking road runner and i was like what the fuck so i was like what's going on she's like i'm late and i was like okay and then she was like oh and victor got their first win and i automatically i was like <laughs> I didn't even look at my phone. I just cried. And then I reached for my phone and I saw Carolina's missed calls and, <laughs> and missed Me FaceTime be... calls, I the was, cacao. And I then was I was freaking out because I was late and because I was like, oh my gosh, I need to hurry up so I can watch this. And then I opened Twitter and Cindy was like, I can't watch it. I'm going to be late. And I was like, bitch, just calm down. I'll call you an Uber. And we sat here <laughs> in my bra. <laughs> I, I was still changing. <laughs> and then we watched it and cried. Amazing. Not just little cries. Cynthia was on the ground. <laughs> I was just sobbing. But yeah, congratulations to Victon. Finally got their first win. What? Very well deserved. If you guys haven't heard their latest comeback, please do. Their album is phenomenal. And last week we did a review of it. So you can go and check it out on last week's podcast. In other news, moving on, we got some sad, 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 sad. X1 is Boy, my poor being, babies. they're not attending. All of their schedules are being canceled left and right. And That's I am so upset. I am so sad about this and angry because last week we talked about how 
Izone was gonna was getting the short end of the stick. Well, you know, like a day later after we recorded, they announced that X One was also getting the short end of the stick, and I'm just like, listen, y'all, these boys and girls did not go through the most in As this and they had show. anything to do with, yeah, it. yeah, like they had no idea. It wasn't like they had big money and being like, hey, here's fifty grand, put me in the lineup. <laughs> like, right, the whole no. reason that they're there is because they got no money. Exactly, they got no money. That's right. Tra- they're trying to make it. So honestly, like, I feel so bad for them. And it just upsets me. It makes me angry that they're getting such bad treatment and people are bad mouthing them and all this stuff. And it's not their fault. Like, it's not like I don't I don't get it. It's the adults. It's the adults fault. Furthermore, as we were speaking about Victor, y'all know our thoughts about this. Basically, I don't okay. even know. We sacrificed. You know what? You know what? I'm going to be real honest. I'm going to be real fucking honest. I gave away the father of my children <laughs> to go into the army. This is where, okay, we're oh in the 1800s. Oh, my God. Right my, oh my fa- God. The father and monarchy of my family just went to war. He went to war, so and crazy. he is now working for the enemy. So I can give my son meat instead of just potatoes for dinner. <laughs> and now my husband ain't even working, but he's still with the enemy. That's how it feels. Excuse me, what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We sacrificed our, our father, captain. our captain of this boat, a leader, for the greater good. Because we're like, okay, at least Victon will finally be able to strive and we were very very happy sad but happy and now we're like okay and then and the song was gonna be able to like be prospering everybody's gonna be happy and then they said psych song was fucking sadness isn't over yet bitch strap in yeah damn man yeah it's 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 tough and it's just it just sucks again like prime example is at the v live awards yeah the, that's the this is the first year ever that the place that the venue that they have it at is not completely filled mm-hmm. yep. and it's because one it's we're just like screw this like you canceled x1 from going we're boycotting so they didn't go and most of the seats were empty and i was just like you guys do not see how much like how bad it is and you know what somebody made a good point and it was like those fans that wanted the other boys to debut and they're the ones that started looking at all the numbers like somebody was just like are you guys happy now and also like if you look at x1 like let's look back on the other produce groups the other produce groups yes they had already debuted idols like they had minyan and sungwoon Mm -hmm. and things like that but x1 in terms of idols that are literally getting their second chance is so much greater than any other group that is yeah come out of produce like you have Hango, you have Wusuk, you have Sung Yoon, you have Sung Woo like all these men that have been trying so hard for so long they finally got a little ounce they got a little bit of a break and now all of a sudden because you because you're a 15 year old favorite who is gonna prosper no matter what because he's still at a good company He's still going to do well. He's young yep. because he didn't make it into the group. It's an issue. And then you you look at the young kids that are in X1 as well. Like their maknae line is large. Like yeah, they got hella babies in X1. And now the potential of them, be their reputation and their careers being stained by this little thing is like could jeopardize their career, to be honest, forever. Yeah. The way that they're going about this too, like they're basically punishing the kids for something that they had no control over. And I feel like that's really, really unfair. So yep. unfair to them. And if you look at, like, the airport, like, um, situation when uh, X1 went to Thailand um, or wherever they went for the little uh, showcase show thing that they did recently, there was a lot of reporters, yes, and people pissed, but there was a more outpouring of, like, fans and love than anything yep. else. It's like Terika said, the people like Terika said about the whole Monster X thing. The people that are mad about this are not the people that are consuming X One's content. No, right. So why is it forcing your hand to do something about X One when the people who are buying X One's m- merchandise, who are listening to X One's music, going to X One shows, 
have nothing to do with the people that are saying things online. Not only yep. are you punishing these boys from not being able to perform and do what you literally put on a show for them to become. So now they're not performing at all. They're just sitting in their dorm doing what? Contemplating on probably blaming themselves for what's going on. Well, yeah. maybe if I was better, like I could have actually gotten into the top and like this wouldn't yep. have happened. Uh-huh. Like, things like this that mentally ruin these kids. Because exactly. like I said, half of X1 are children. So mentally these kids are going through so much shit. And the young line, like them being the guys they are, they've been through so much in the industry already. They're like, well, it's just another fucking thing. Yeah, which sucks for, me for to them. Go through. Yeah. Which and also, sucks for them as well. It's like hindering like your fave that didn't make it anyway. Because like all the people that like didn't make it like the first protos, like Prudus 101, all the like contestants that didn't make it into the top still went on to have like solo things or they were put in other units, things yep. like that, because of the success of like Prudus 101 and and like one on one. So like the fact that like now you've done this and exposed all this and like, well this person should have made it and this person shouldn't have made it. Like now everything's at a standstill. Like your boys still didn't debut. Now their like whole solo things might be halted or hindered because like usually the ones who are supporting the group that won are the people who are also supporting the subunits. So for example, like yeah. we loved one on one, but then we supported like JBJ and all the other groups that came yeah. out of it and all the like other you know what I mean? Other solos. So like now you've pissed off the people who were like supported x1 and now maybe they're just like well i don't want anything to do with Bruce anyway like at all like my boy had yep. to stop his so why should i go out and buy your boy's album when he's in yep and then what i think about too is how they set the for example like if you guys have heard our podcast you know that we are big one-on-one stands like to this mm-hmm. day like one-on-one is just yes yes, yes. so <laughs> yes. It, if yes if you go back and like they announce like what the real lineup would have been the only thing that I was mad about was that Samuel didn't make it. Literally. Yeah. That's it. Samuel because, deserves the world. Yes. Because I think about it and I'm just like, listen, I don't care that they rigged it because the 11 boys that they picked made an amazing group. Really magic. Together, yeah. yeah it's like, and oh, not, well. <laughs> exactly. Not only that, but every other member that was supposed to be in 101 actually is doing amazing right now. Yep. Yeah. Uh, again, Samuel the ser- the ser- is better. Okay. Better. Yeah. That's, that's the only. That's thing. That's the only thing. But every other member that was supposed to be in this one, you know, in their OG lineup or whatever, they're all doing amazing things like, right now. Like we wouldn't have got, we wouldn't have got um, New S W. Yes, we wouldn't have got freaking like, New S W. And that. Oh, like yeah. yeah. So I'm just like chill out like good things are gonna come from this like whether it was rigged or not like things like who things cares are gonna happen. right <laughs> no one cares like prime example the unit was not rigged then look what happened <laughs> no <laughs> tell me how i was thinking about that the other day i was like damn these boys got in on their merit that lineup was fucked up but it was a real lineup <laughs> and they didn't do nothing <laughs> You were absolutely correct. <laughs> so then, so then, what's the point? See, this is why Produce didn't let y'all motherfuckers vote on your own because y'all would have put some dumbass motherfucker in that lineup yep. who would have thrown off the whole shit. They looked at the yep. votes. That's why said, you can't choose your own survival group, y'all. Right. Not because you guys <laughs> they're mad because y'all would make a shit lineup. Yeah, they saw the votes and they said, yeah. "Yikes, nah, not gonna happen. Not on my." Y'all daughter. would have a big like, ass no. sore thumb in the middle of. <laughs> fucking produce like y'all had in the middle of fucking the unit umb was a fucking win except for one fucking piece we're still mad about it anyways but Ugh. yeah so we just want justice for x1 and also izone like they deserve better than this shit so um companies out there please get it together and don't blame the kids on this shit, okay? Don't get me started on the Unity lineup, okay? We ain't gonna fucking start with Ooh, that. No, let's not talk about it. Anyways, Catastrophe. moving on. While we're talking about units, um, there is a whole debate right now about NCT Dream becoming a fixed unit, everybody. Okay, me like, and Terika got a lot to say about this. Okay, I just... Me and Terika, the resident uh, Dream Zens in this uh, podcast, hello. Hi. I would just like to say, this is some shit 
that you know four of them are graduating and then we just left with the duo but it's okay because we can get like a young tvxq for with jisung and channel but you know what that's not what we're talking about we're talking about how nct dream needs to become a fixed unit including mark just putting it out there (laughs) i know he's involved in everything i get it he's overworked okay whatever okay the boy asked for it for being so goddamn talented i think if he had enough time on his hands he wouldn't know what to do with it he really would. He'd true. be like, "Oh my god, like I'm not in a unit." Wait, I mean, what? the time that he does, Free time? the time that he does have, he just sits in his room and plays guitar and makes like writes songs. So like, literally, might as well Damn. just go ahead and write songs for Dream. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I Dream, um, but you don't have to call it Dream. It you be- don't like. I'm pro fixed unit Dream. They don't have to call yep. it Dream. They can still keep quote unquote Dream to debut like new rookies and have them change out whatever you want to do. I just feel like. The music that these boys make together is so good that their like, chemistry is just so it's good. so great. And yeah. yeah, they'll they'll whatever they do, whatever units or whatever they put them in when they decide to do that or whatever, yeah, they'll fit right in and they'll still make great music with them. But, but just Dream like, is magic. But right. Like exactly. Like the music they make together and just their bond, like how do you feel if like you've been working with this person for forever and you've been like all of your like childhood and your memories and your ups and downs and like your like successes and failures and everything are with these people. And then it's like, Oh, bye. And now you have to start all over with a new set of people. You know what I mean? Like they just, they got attached to each other. Like, like that was supposed to happen. And now they just want to kind of rip them apart. And it's just like, once you do that, you have no backup plan, really. Like, yeah, yeah, a couple of them, they might put them in wavy or whatever the case may be. But, like, it's really sad because overall, like, just watching the videos of them, like, crying and stuff and saying that, like, oh, they don't know no. what's happening next. Or, like, the fact that they didn't even think that they would be able to, like, perform and have their own concert. I'm just like, what are you telling these boys who debuted, who got NCT their first win? The first NCT yeah. win was yeah. from Drake! Yeah. <laughs> like how how do you just leave them hanging like that and like be like oh yeah by the way all of your members are gonna graduate and then like we just we're gonna put you in limbo we don't know what we're gonna do with you we're not we're gonna do with them like it sucks and they have they have hella fans i don't know what sm is telling them but they have heck of fans they need to come to the states and have a concert and they need to be a fixed unit whether it's with or without Mark. It's probably going to be without Mark, which I think, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. fine. It's whatever. That's fine. I have a feeling that they'll put them, that they'll put them all in one unit. Yeah. they know, Like, SM is just so, like I said, so, so I'm brought up Super Junior because apparently, I didn't know this because I never really got, like, into Super Junior like that. But, like, apparently, like, they were supposed to do the same, like, system, like, graduating thing. But they, like, all the fans were complaining. And they are like, no, we love this group of guys. And they saw how, like, powerful they were. And they're like, nah, we don't, we're not going to split them up. They're just going to be a thing. They're just going to be a yeah. thing forever. So I feel like the same thing can happen for Dream if they give them the platform. If they give them the opportunity to, like, tour other places and have their own shows. So they could actually see the extent of their fandom and be like, well, dang. But my thing also is, like... If they were, like, you know, at the concert, like, Jisung was sobbing. Oh, it broke my heart. Oh, my God. And, like, they're all like, oh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen to us. First of all, Jisung is one of the most talented people (gasps) in NCT. So talented. Just going to put that fucking out there. Second of all, all of NCT Dream, they're just a superior ass unit of NCT. Like, that's just T facts. Just their chemistry together is just. They have been the only solid group that NCT has had because you know the other NCT has been taking people out putting people in taking people out little, 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 little. NCT U hasn't been the same ever in any <laughs> it really has but NCT U is not supposed to be the same <laughs> it's not supposed to be the same neither is I'm NCT 127 is supposed to be and they've been taking out and putting in members like it's fucking nothing but 127 had like a theory behind it and how they added the seven and then the two, the one and then the two or the two and then the one. And then that makes it one to seven. Yeah, but it's supposed to, isn't that, it's the coordinates of soul, isn't it's it? It's the like, coordinates of soul. Weren't they supposed yeah. to be like soul based? <laughs> and like you so, were supposed to be the still. one that was more global, right? I don't even see. Yes. We don't know. No one knows, SM. <laughs> no one cares about your whole little system. And so you're also, not going to make them a fixed unit. NC, also, <laughs> SM's confused about their own fucking units. Because when NCT 127 debuted, they were like, this is a fixed unit. No one else is leaving this this unit and then win win is gone what do you mean <laughs> girl win win just disappeared <laughs> he just fucking left 
They're like, let's put someone that looks slightly like him, but that's Korean. So let's put Jungwoo in there. <laughs> You're right. No one will fucking know that he's gone. You're right, Loki. I was like, oh. yo, this is like so confusing. As a person that like only listens to their music and has no idea about any like details about all of these units, like listening to all this makes my head hurt. Well, that's why I just go with it. They, they'll, they can go like NCT forty five. Oh, it's it's the the members that their age goes to fifteen. Whatever, I don't know. Carolina don't I'll care like, as long cool, as ten. Cool. <laughs> She's like as long as exactly. there's a ten <laughs> or a Lucas. Yeah, she says if there's a ten or a Lucas, we're good. Well, see, that's the whole point. Bet. The only reason why we got a ten or a Lucas is because they started to just like let's add some more members and create this whole new unit. It was a whole new group. Really? Wait, we're it. just Sorry. adding. And they're like, people. you know what? Let's put the, the guy from thailand in a chinese unit because that fucking makes sense <laughs> this is what sm does when they uh, make new nct units i'm surprised they didn't put mark in there to be honest they were just like well, okay. i mean i was thought, waiting for it i was like we they can make mark it. uh seem chinese lee is a chinese surname they can be like mark lee he got some lineage to china they'd be like oh hey mark you know that lizzo song that you take a dna ta- dna test and turns out you're 100 that bitch he was like turns out you're 22 percent chinese so you're 100 percent and wavy congratulations <laughs> congratulations <laughs> if i worked for sm you know the power i would have in nct oh, girl. My the unit units i would make in nct <sighs> bitch a young unit are you kidding me all I know is that maybe I should have just stayed in NCT Anti and I wouldn't be going through this right now. <laughs> like, this is why past Terika was on to something. She's like, this is going to be a complete and epic crash and burn. <laughs> this is going to be stupid. You're going to get attached to members and they're going to get attached to others and then they're going to rip them apart and sit them in a basement. That's dumb. And it was like, no, it's going to be great. And here we are. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Moral of the story. Right. I was right. But moral of the story, keep NCT Dream a fixed unit and then just do yep. many units in between. Bring them to the States. Bring Wavy to the States. We also need an SM Town because I would like to see all of the SM members. Thank you. The next thing we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about our dear S-Coops. S-Coops. <laughs> Wait, what S-Coops. happened with um, what happened he is- He's taking a temporary hiatus because of anxiety. Oh, no. Um, oh, no. I'm very sad, but also I'm happy that he is taking this time for himself. And you know how much it must have taken him to do this. And yeah. I really, really, really hope that he gets better and that he feels good and that he's just prospering and gets all the rest that he needs. And yes, mental health matters. Also, he has not been diagnosed completely with anxiety but the doctor said that he does have anxious symptoms so he has symptoms of like things that can make him anxious that could then lead to a problem so they're like let's just nip it in the bud now you go on hiatus you take some time so it doesn't become a serious problem and good for you Pledis, because i know you're a piece of trash company so i'm glad you did something right in your life for once (laughs) good job but we hope for a speedy recovery um we love you and we send lots of love. Oh, S cups. And other news. <laughs> Terica, I'm going to let you take the lead on this one, girl. Okay. Like, if anyone didn't know, it's been all over Twitter. But basically, Amber said some pretty insensitive things regarding a video of a black man being harassed by the cops. She basically said that she he handled it the wrong way and that he should respect the cops yada 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 and like it's just really disappointing because i feel like the thing she said the only reason why she apologized for the things that she said was because of the backlash it's just like it's just really frustrating because like we everyone says not everyone but when these things happen the artist in question always puts out some like bs apology and in that apology instead of saying like I was wrong. I was insensitive. I'm sorry. I th- like I need to learn from this. Blah 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 blah. They always say the whole like, I'm so sorry for hurting you, but like, um, I didn't I'm, know I, I didn't know because of X Y Z. Also, like, I really support all of the like you know 
Black Lives Matter movement and like my best friend when I was in second grade was black. <laughs> so like it's fine. Like I love black people. It's great. Like there's like stop. Like you don't have to explain that like you have a black best friend or like your mom is half black or your cousin or whatever it is. Like no. Like just say you were wrong. You were ignorant and you want to learn from it because making the excuse is like, "Well, you know me. You know I'm not like that." Well, then why did you say the things that you said? Just take it Ooh. as like a learning curve. You know what I mean? Like we all say things that we sometimes we don't really understand the nature of the situation, right? Like sometimes we'll say something or like, well, that's kind of culturally insensitive, like culturally insensitive. And someone will explain why. And then you're like, dang, I'm sorry. Like I didn't mean to do that. You know, you just take it like that. There's no need to explain. Well, well, you know, I, you know, I support Black Lives Matter and that like I like black people. Like pff, girl, bye. Like, no, like that makes you seem like, it's a fake apology, especially if you do it after there's so much backlash. If you had one person come to you and say that, like, hey, this was wrong, that apology should have just been out right then and there. Especially in, the, like, the podcast. Was it a podcast they were recording? It mm-hmm. was, like, a video. And yeah. the guy basically, like, Loki called her out, like, and said and told her, like, I don't think you should be saying those things because that's not a problem of our community so we don't know exactly also my that was my biggest issue like why are y'all talking about this like none of y'all yeah have any like (laughs) literally no this is my thing as well like people can be like oh yeah people of color understand the struggle nah it ain't the same (laughs) it's It's not the same for us as it is no for the black community it's just not there's no way any of us can ever relate to that so for you to be like oh yeah we're all people of color it's fine to talk about no no (laughs) it's It's not your issues it's not your issues exactly and that's what going off of what kat said i just want to say like in this podcast we talk about like korean issues and things like that but we say it over and over again that this is from like an international fan perspective Mm -hmm. like we don't you know, we will never understand what mm-hmm. K fans and K netizens and like people that live in Korea uh-huh. are thinking and like their values and what they grew up with. Like we can only read about it and things like that, but it's completely different. So that's why even when we talk about all mm-hmm. these issues that are happening in like the K pop community and things like that, like in Korea, we're just like, you know, this is all from an international point of view. Exactly. So that that's why we always say that because we know that we will never be able to understand fully culturally that culture what yeah it is. culturally exactly what they're and, going through and that's the thing like you can be an ally and you can say yep. like this is a problem this is an issue and you can speak on that but you can't speak from the experience so like the thing about being an ally is to like use your platform or your privilege or whatever knowledge you have to help uplift the voice of those that are in the struggle. So don't mm-hmm. overshadow the voice. Don't throw your opinion like, well, I just think that maybe if he wouldn't have done X, Y, Z, then they wouldn't have came and did this because like, that's not always the case. Like, you know what I mean? Like, no. especially with everything that's yeah. happened, like it's a real sensitive subject, especially when you have like, not even, I'm just going to say like, not even just black people, like in this instance, that's what we're talking about. But when you have like, black people or Hispanic people or whatever who are like literally afraid of situations like that like I know like me being an African-American like I've had conversations with my parents my cousins my male cousins have had conversations with their parents about like the things that we have to do personally whenever we encounter the police like we have Mm -hmm. to have conversations when we're young about like well if this ever happens to you you put your hands up you don't do this you do this and like that's really sad to think that like as an eight-year-old or whatever you have to have these conversations to make sure to ensure your safety just because like the color of your skin so for someone to be like well you should have did this and then maybe they wouldn't have went after you when that man was just literally just eating his sandwich sandwich. like he couldn't have done anything else but just he was just standing there breathing so it's like that's kind of really insensitive for her to say that she didn't understand it i'm glad that guy called her out and didn't just sit back like oh i'm glad he was like well you don't really understand it and so the apology that she gave didn't really seem that genuine because then she was like, well, I've been in Korea for 10 years. I don't know. But Black Lives Matter. And that's another thing. Yeah. And someone pointed out, like, is, well, how do you know about that movement? Then obviously, you know enough about that movement and you've been in Korea for 10 years when that all ties together. So what are you talking about? And also, why is this always a cop out for these American, Asian American celebrities in Korea putting in work to be like, oh, well, I haven't lived in the States. You're here all the time. 
yeah. What do you mean yeah. you don't? You haven't been in the states. You're here. I mean, the news is free. Everybody, the internet is free. I know y'all are looking at things. Yeah, because these things like, are happening like in your hometowns, like back home. Like things are like yeah. stories are coming up back home. I know your like your family or your friends have told you things. Like especially if you say that you're so in touch and that your friend group is so diverse, that I'm pretty sure you know about these things from your friends. So I'm just like, yeah. it's not that hard to like be up on that especially my thing too is when you take so much inspiration from that community as far as like your music and things like that so you can't tell me that you know all about the music but yet you don't know the culture because that makes you seem even more like not legit because yeah because now it's like okay well how are you so deep into this music and it inspires you so much but you don't know the culture behind it or you're not willing to uplift the people who inspire this culture who inspire you ignorance shouldn't be an excuse and it'll never be an excuse exactly so like if she truly just didn't understand she should have just been like yo i'm sorry thank you for calling me out i'll look more into it i'll try Mm -hmm. to like if if uh, maybe you guys can educate me like what i said was definitely wrong and like you know that's it i know she's not dumb she's seen this shit happen with other idols bam bam is a prime example Boy came mm-hmm. out and he was like, my company told me not to talk, but I am so sorry, y'all. I am uneducated. Exactly. I am stupid and I'm going to learn and never do it again. I and mean, what happened? Yeah. He never did it again. I don't know. It's just getting frustrated to the point where it's just like, dang, like it sucks too, because it's just like you might love this artist or you want to support this artist, but then you don't feel supported yourself. So you're kind of yeah. conflicted because yeah. you're like this whole this person who I've been hyping up and who I've been saying that like. Like, wow, their music inspired me. Or, wow, like, they're, like, part of my happiness. And all of a sudden does something like this. And you're just like, well, shit. Moral of the story, don't be stupid. Um, We have a fuckery of the week this week. And terrible that we have one this week because it has come again. We've talked about this before, which is even more sad. But there has found to be abuse in uh, TS Entertainment's company specifically with the members of tracing abuse as far as their living situation and literally getting beaten the members came out well two members came out um woo yup and taesan filed a complaint against ts entertainment and good for them because Mm -hmm. tracing is still like a slightly rookie group Mm -hmm. so good for them for being like fuck you for stuffing me in a fucking storage closet i'm gonna sue your ass and I'm going to call the cops yeah. on y'all for beating me with a steel chair, which don't make no damn sense to me mm-hmm. whatsoever. That It's so sad. Like, I, I just want to say, like, I know that when you want to achieve something, like, you'll do anything. Mm. But, and, like... Just I, like trainees, just don't go to TS Entertainment. Like this company, since the beginning, has been sued left and right by their artists. Like it's just like it's sad it to see sense. that this is happening. Yeah, like it's sad to see this happening, and I feel so bad and hurt for these boys because yeah. I know that they just wanna, you know, be idols and be in their group, and you know, want Oscar. they probably. They probably felt that relief, like, oh, my God, I'm finally debuting. But then at what cost? Exactly. At what cost do they have to, like, at what cost do they have to pay in order to, quote, unquote, make it? I don't Mm -hmm. think, you know, their mental health or even physical health or anything bad should be the price that they pay. Because I think idols already pay such a big price in order to, you know, like, be an idol. So I think they, they already work hard. You know what? Just don't make it harder on them and don't abuse them like what the hell's wrong with you yeah i don't understand how people like they're children like i don't understand how you think it's okay or that you can like find yourself beating a kid with a chair or anybody but like especially like a a kid you know what i mean especially like this kid who like trusts you enough to like give up their childhood or do all these things and work hard like that and you're just like you know what I mean like when they sign that contract they put the trust in you that you were gonna like not only help them fulfill their dreams but take care of them and protect them their parents too you know what I mean like they left their parents and their parents like instill this trust in you to like make sure you were gonna watch over their kid I just don't understand yeah but I'm just happy that they spoke up about it and like are suing and wanting termination and honestly like it's hard, it's just it's heartbreaking really it really is but like a couple weeks ago we talked about how we like felt a change in the k-pop world and i feel like this is part of that change like i feel like maybe a few years ago 
these boys wouldn't have like they wouldn't have came like spoke out about it yeah. or anything it just would have yeah. been a thing that happened whether people got it on because i've no i've seen like old videos of like i was being hit on like like people recorded it and like nothing was done about it like you see like this like manager smack this girl in the face and she just takes it and puts her head down and like the people around her just like turn their heads and the person that filmed it was like yikes but no one did anything but now I feel like these idols are like standing up for themselves and they're like I'm important my mental health is important what you're doing and how you're treating me is not okay and so like whether it be like this isn't right and so now I'm gonna sue or like I'm not okay, I can't tour, I'm going to take a break for myself type thing. I feel like yep. they're starting to, like, under, like value themselves more and their worth. Like, yeah, I want to make it, but there's a right way to do it, and I'm not going to put yeah. myself in jeopardy for that. So it's like I feel like things are changing in the industry, and they're just not taking this crap anymore, and it's great. We are here for the movement. For the <laughs> movement! <laughs> I'm here for idols sticking up for themselves. It's just such a wild time in k-pop i think every company wants their artists to be successful so they drastically do ridiculous and stupid things continuously until someone is like yo like you need to stop like yeah it's enough but how about we move on to some happier news because obviously all of our news this week were all just like controversial and like debates and all the stuff that's happening in k-pop Literally. Um, Victim had their first win. Thank you. That was great. Well, yeah. <laughs> but I meant the rest of the news. And, like, everything else. Like, oh, I'm sorry. Was great. Oh, except for one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, but let's move on to some happier things like comebacks. Come We're gonna start with Mama Moo. They came back with their song Hip, and I'm pretty sure this all this song just came about because of all their fashion controversies, which are yeah, not really literally. controversies. Well, for Hwasa, they are. Well, yeah, just because she th- she looks like, thick. She yeah, because she thick and she dressing good and people mad about yeah. it. That's why Hwasa That's fine. it. She fine. She good. fine. That's why. But uh, I like the song. I liked it. I can't even lie. It was about. It was really like catchy, mm-hmm. and I like the meaning again behind it because it was kind of like saying how everything I do is scrutinized by the media. So like, screw you, basically. And I like how even they were just kind of saying like, if I do something, like it's hip. So I don't understand why you're hating. And I was just like, well, damn. Yeah. Formally, I must say that uh, this song was actually very, very good, and I really, really fucked with the choreography like okay yeah they went the fuck off for it and i even watched the dance practice to be honest with you oh did you i didn't really pay attention to the choreography because i was so distracted by the outfits like i liked the color like the red scheme and the outfits and stuff i was just like ooh, that's cute or like even though there was that one outfit that Hwasa was wearing the all red one with like the the white like lining i hated it it looks like she was wearing a diaper I didn't <laughs> she said i Damn. hated it i like twasa's like all of her outfits especially the sparkly one like that now she that had on pretty, listen Hwasa killed all of it like Hwasa's Hwasa. yeah but yeah that one crazy. outfit i was like what is happening but i like i really like the concept of just like the different like extreme in quotation marks like outfits that they would use and how again it just goes back to the song kind of saying like everything I do is scrutinized but this is my fashion like what I do is what I do and it's hip and it's cool and um they even reference the whole thing with like the showing the underwear which is when Huaza was wearing the the jeans with the the sh- that showed like her Calvin's type thing Please, like it's called fashion for a reason, okay? Just Again, let it be. Like we said, we can never culturally understand Korea, yeah, and their things. But those girls, they would be like, they would be like covered up here in the states. <laughs> you right, you right. Some yep. of the stage outfits that like Cardi be having or Megan, like. <laughs> Not even that. Some of the outfits that I just see at shows from fans. Like. Yeah. But Mama Moo, this song was really good. It was really hype. And we were all pleasantly surprised because the last song that they did was not that great. Anyways, yes. Next comeback we're going to talk about is Nature's Oopsie, My Bad. And all I would like to say is Oopsie, My Bad. I hated this. <laughs> <laughs> so much. I literally stopped watching it. <laughs> girl i was watching it and i'm just like i was watching it i'm like 
confused. I'm just like, do I like this? Do I not like this? I don't like this. I, I don't. Yeah. What's going on? I listened to like almost half of it. And then I'm not going to lie. I muted it and I just watched it for the outfits. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, mm. like, like I, at the, I was just watching and like people were just like, oh, like it's like Dala Dala. And I'm just like, oh, excuse me, do Where? not compare it. Do not compare it to the bop that was Dala Dala. But I get it's just weird. Like it sounded weird. I feel like it yeah. just it just wasn't like it was like they were trying to be cute. But at the same time, they were not. And it just didn't it just didn't sit right with me. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. And I feel like it's just like that oopsie thing annoyed the crap yeah, out of like, me. Oopsie. Oh. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, your girl likes a cute concept. I'm just like, I like to be like, oh, there's like out. And like, you know what I mean? Well, like, but that. I was excited. Yeah, I was excited because when it started. Okay, first of all, I saw tweets on, uh, I saw on Twitter, people are just like, oh my God, nature is like music video, blah, 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 blah. So I was like, ooh. And then the music video started and I was just like, oh, like, okay, we're going for like witchy vibes. Okay. Oh, Alice in Wonderland. I was like, okay. And then the song started. I'm just like, wait, what? I was like, this ain't it. It reminded me of, uh, because I saw a lot of stuff about it on Twitter too. So that's why I was excited about it. It reminded me of like when Side Effect came out. Everybody was like, this is a fucking masterpiece. I was like, oh, I'm so excited. Stray Kids came back and I turned on that song. It was, what the fuck? You were just like, this is just noise. That you say this. Is still a bop. To this day, every literally everyone on Stan Twitter is like, that was a masterpiece. I'll never forgive Stan Twitter for making everyone I mean, think it, it was a bad a masterpiece, song. But like, I fuck with it. I will never forgive anyone who thinks it was a bad song. And I'm like, bitch, then you ain't never forgiven me. <laughs> Lyrically, it was great. And that was the problem. The lyrics were great, but the music was trash. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> But anyways, back to nature. Sorry. This was I'll not it. I like the outfits, like Terika yeah, they said, were super and I pretty, and it was very beautiful. But like Terika said, itself. I muted it and I watched them be pretty. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but the next comeback we're gonna talk about whoo, is into it. Oh yeah. Ooh la la. And boy, boy were we into it. We were. I was fucking about to say, were you into it? Into it. Okay, me and Cynthia did a reaction. It'll be up on our channel. Um, <laughs> and let me tell you, me and Cynthia were shook to the core of our being i i saw into it at kcon they were great they were great yes. but i never really got into them sadly but there was one member that always like caught my eye and i was like oh he fine and then so i was like oh into it had to come back one of my mutuals like cat i know you do reactions ho react to into it they need the clout and i was like i got you ho even though we only have like 200 followers i got you don't worry <laughs> I'm still going to watch it. And so we did a reaction. Me and Cynthia were shook to our core. Specifically, one member shook me and Cynthia to the core of all of our beliefs. Uh, <laughs> Was it the one of the rapper dudes? No. I don't know. He had me like... Oh. He had me like thinking I was like uh, so many different types of religions because I didn't know what God he came <laughs> from, but I wanted to know. Um, You're right. What was his name? I don't know. I'm about to Google it right now. Hold on. His name was... In Ho. In Ho made in me ho. his Ho. In Ho made me his Ho. Quick. <laughs> He's beautiful. This song gave me like casual vampire vibes. Casual like, vampire? <laughs> what the fuck? You know, because... Okay, because this is why. Okay. Because they're like... It's like very casual and stuff, but then it goes into dressy. But the lyrics himself is kind of just like... I can't be satisfied every time I see you, my throat burns. And it's like, I'm like poison all spreading all over you now. So I'm just like, so you bit me. Got you. I really like this song. I like this whole like music video. And they look fine. They did. They look good. Like, they look good. And And that sweater, bitch, I see you. Oh, yeah, wait, the, 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 the guy you like had that white sweater on? Yeah, with the shoulders out, Ooh. with the collar on. Yes. Ooh, yes. Ooh, I, we went good. through it. Me and Cynthia saw him. We were like, <gasps> oh. <laughs> like, taken aback. But we besides were. the good looks, y'all, yeah, this song is really, actually, really good. It's it has really a, good. like, a tango-ish type of sound. And um, they basically send, say in their lyrics that they will ruin you. So yeah. look at that. Beautiful. Do it. Bet. The guy in the white jacket, his voice does not match his face. Like it was like the fur, <laughs> the fur coat. Like he looks like really like yeah, girl. He's like, 
<laughs> I was like, what? Wait, what? Is that the pretty, like, the pretty face one? I don't know. He had, on, like, a white, like, fur coat thing situation. And he just looks like, like, yeah, like a man. But, like, his voice was like, I'm a vocal queen. Like, <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. I mean, it was nice, well, but I just didn't expect it. Well, we're talking about, like, do you know some comments about them? Um, Can someone please explain to me how the Machna is the leader? Like, please tell me. I right? want to know. Like, I love this, but, like, how, how does that like happen? Him? It looks like that tells us a lot about the group. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, this is a group of me and Carolina. Time to talk about South Club Nam Taehyun with the eye look, sir. Um, I think it's funny that he came back and it was all a song about how he wants his girlfriend back. I and I'm was just like, you cheated on her. Dying. <laughs> you, uh, Same, sir, like, you cheated okay. on her. Yeah. And then expected, expected for her, like, um, okay. He's just like, great timing for this song. He's like, I love you so much, but yikes, things got kind of rough. And like, I know I cheated on you, <laughs> but like that other girl, like she left me too. So like, you should come back. Cause like, yeah. I love you, girl. <laughs> I love you, girl. This is like a song that's like the fucking, you know, when you're like, what, like, how do men have the audacity to be like this? This is exactly the embodiment of that. It really is. The audacity. This is literally men ain't shit is this song. (laughs) And the, the the thing is that the song is good, too. Like, it's, it's amazing. His vocals are great. I love the alternative sound for it. Yeah, it's like, it's a good song, but it was just the lyrics. I thought it was just funny. I'm just like. My dude, like you literally just got caught because you cheated on your girlfriend. <laughs> He's going to be like, this is how I'm going to get people to not hate me anymore. I'm going to write a song yep. about how I'm sorry I am and ask for her back. Ask for her back. And it's working because <laughs> everyone loves this song. It's a great song. Know, right? <laughs> Damn it. It's a great song. <laughs> Damn you, Nam <laughs> Taehyun. You were song. bamboozled. The next comeback we're going to talk about, Stray Kids came back. Their Woo! first comeback is eight. <laughs> Listen, we, I got a PSA, okay? She saw Woojin. Her radar was... I saw my man's. The the back of his head. No, and, I saw um, him too. And I was like, yeah. wait a moment. <laughs> yeah. A moment. Uh, so wait a I moment. Wa- <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say that while watching this, I had to pause it and think about what actually happened because it, it was all a dream for me, okay? But it was actually a reality. Oh. And I got upset. That Wujin left again because I saw him in the damn music video. And I know whoever edited this video, like you props to you, man, because I know that that was probably a bitch. (laughs) They were just like, hi, we need you to edit this guy out of all the shots. And he was like, all the shots. All the shots. Flips table. Like, listen, there's like like a power of editing, bitch. But like, you know, you can't just like make magic happen either. (laughs) He's like, this guy right here, they pointed to a picture. They pointed to a picture. This guy, you need to edit him out. Edit him out of what scene? Everyone. Huh? (laughs) (laughs) Yep. So. I need a raise. Yeah. I need about $25,000. I hope that JYP paid him because I can only imagine how hard that was. Or her. Or her. Or that's true. She's a whole Wujin stan. (laughs) Sobbing. (laughs) I'm just saying. I feel like I feel sad watching this music video. But at the same time, the song is really good. The song is really good. That's how we feel about Victor. The song is so good, though. It's so good. Man, I hate straight kids for being so good, man. You want to be sad about the situation, but, but then the they were is so good. It is. And they yeah. look so cute and oh, so yeah. happy. It was so like, for me, it was like so different from their usual stuff. Yeah. I was just yes. like, oh my God. like it was like a pleasant surprise. I was like, I was honestly expecting to go hard as I usually do for straight kids. Straight kids. Yeah. Woo! And then, um, but I was just like, oh, okay. We are happily bopping, but also low key sad bopping. We're okay, sad bopping. We saw <laughs> But when, was, we, <laughs> <laughs> but when we sat and we dropping, we're, we're sobbing. Do, 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 when we we're sat and we bopping, we sobbing. That's good. We sobbing. We go. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna turn that. We're gonna say next time when we say sad bopping, we're not gonna say sad bopping. Be like we're sobbing. Like the sop. We sobbing. Was a sop. <laughs> Everyone's gonna be like, what? <laughs> sad bop. You know how we get down. Stop it. Stop it. How we get down. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> the equivalent of like waving your light stick but crying. <laughs> Carolina's gone, y'all. She's dying. 
she sees herself sopping in the crowd. That's why. <laughs> But yeah. Anyways, what we're trying to say about Astronaut is that it's a great <laughs> song. <laughs> and I'm I'm so happy with the sound that they are doing because it was a very pleasant surprise. It was cute. Like I just is this yeah. part of the like the series, like the thing? Was it the Moreau? I like, think so. I, yeah. I think so. I th- I feel like this is just like an inter like immediate song before their actual okay because like somebody like, was talking back. about theories or something like there's clones in there and i was just like there's clones in the happy song with them on the playscape <laughs> well that's the thing because if oh, you I, watch I the video yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah some people are in the cage yeah. and then i forget who it was that met up with chan and chan was just like all right like you're here like we're going through this door now and i was just like what's happening yeah so i was just like that's that's weird it was just yeah it was just really cute because it it's kind of saying like that they can go anywhere as long as they're together which made it even i sadder. know oh Woojin, what you do come back Woojin, we miss you but stray kids fucking killed it hyunjin you look fucking incredible hyunjin and han oh my god han my looks so good my yes you're right i'm gonna need to find out <gasps> I'm going to have to find another man. <laughs> but it won't be hard. Move along. Oh, you're right. <laughs> it it's will okay. not. Like, you can definitely go Damn. on a Stray Kids journey again because I had to find a new man because, you know, things. The next and last comeback we're going to talk about is One. Yeah. J1 finally. has come back with an album, Private One. But that means there's probably going to be a private two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four. Five hundred. Because he was locked away for like seven years. So, you know, he got music. But he anyway, music. he came back. Um, He came back with a whole album. The title it's track great. is. There's like four. Nobody knows. But we're going to talk about 19 because it's my favorite song on the album. Uh- <laughs> 19 is so good there's a guitar riff in it it gives me like a really like punky Uh rap vibe which is Uh super dope and i'm just in love with everything he did in this song not just this song but this entire album like sir Uh, yes the whole album is so good yes but 19 i love that it kind of gave me like a sense of like a young wild and free type of song yeah kind of just like living every day just live day by day without any worry which is kind of what he says in the lyrics but the vibe of the song itself with the little guitar, you know, it's guitar driven and everything. It was really chill. I loved it. I said, yes, bring me the bops. You've been gone for like a year and a half. Give me everything. Give me everything, sir. And he was like, fine, bitch, I'll give you 16 songs. And I was like, God bless America. Thank you, <laughs> Lord. But I also want to talk about Hard to Love because yes. um, he released a little music video for it, which was super cute. It was like a misfit style music video and they were just mm-hmm. causing chaos at a 7-Eleven probably. And I'm just like, all right. But it worked so well with the song. It's like chill vibes all around. And like it reminded mm-hmm. me the way that he sang or like rapped with the auto tune. I was just like, sick K. So it reminded me of sick K a little bit. Yeah. Um. Wow, yeah, he has that but, like, vocally. I know. Thing, like, sick K yeah, just just like this, just in this song, like some of the auto tuning thingies, like reminded me of sick K, just because auto tune and sick K are like synonyms. <laughs> I don't know if that was like shade or if that was. Like- <laughs> but yeah, the whole album is really good. Um, How to Love is also a bop. I'm just really proud of him. He like went MIA because, you know, YG is trash and wouldn't let me, him make music. Yeah. And I feel like he has something for everybody in the album itself. And it just shows his artist, you know, like his artistic abilities. And it's great. It's amazing. And I love that. Again, it's like 16 songs. It's not like he just gave me a single and then dipped out. No, he said, here you go, bitch. A whole storyline. Story Let's line. go. Let's end off with, <laughs> oh my God. with songs of the week what's up it's cat my songs of the week this week yes more than one um we just all adopted we're, Terica, all, we're so. all yeah we're all Terica now um more than one my songs of the week um are aces because i'm seeing them in exactly one month from today Ooh, i will woo. be seeing ace i have been listening to ace's new album but specifically, beat that son. Yeah. Asage Savage. Um, I can't wait to see that live. It's going to be fucking great. I have also been listening to, Carolina's going to love this, Got Seven Ooh. a lot Woo! lately. 
specifically shopping mall. It came on shuffle the other day. What? And I was like, I fucking wow. love this song. I was like, feel Damn. like shopping mall, my shopping mall. <laughs> 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 I love this. Uh, yeah, so then I was listening to Shopping Mall. Bring me back to my Agassi roots. <laughs> J-Bug, you know, maybe in my top ten again. We, we'll talk about it later. Ooh, um, wow. And <laughs> out of your top yes. ten. Yes. Dun, dun, That's, dun. Dun. Know That's for another episode. We find out. Uh, <laughs> and my third song of the week. Wow. Yes, there's a third. Is Damn. NCT Dreams Chewing Gum. Because it also ah! came on shuffle the other day. <laughs> and I've been listening to it ever since. Chew, Wing gum, ch 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 ch. They did the choreo with them on the on the hoverboard thing at their show. I know. Anyway, sorry, Cynthia. Go. Cynthia's gonna name something, and then something one is related. So here, you right. Um, my first song of the week is "Love Scenario" by Icon. Ooh. Ooh. That also Ooh. came up on my shuffle, and I was like, "Oh, okay." And then I proceeded to repeat it fifty times. Times English <laughs> mood. Um, and you are a hundred percent correct. My second song of the week, or should I just say my one of the song of the week is Blue Sky yeah. because me and Raven also had a moment for the song and I am really fucking depressed. Y'all don't understand. Okay. Cute. All right. So my songs of the week is uh <clears throat> every unreleased solo that happened at at, at uh, Super M. I just feel like oh. they all need to be released very oh. soon. They're, oh my god, especially uh GTA is a bobcat. It's a bob tail song. Oh my god. I've seen the fan cams and it's I'm a ready. bob. Wait 4 months. All the solos are great. Um my well technically more than second, but whatever. My second song of the week is uh, you and Village by Beckham. That is my jam. It's been my jam, but seeing it yeah. live, mm-hmm. bruh. And then also, you know, every song ever from NCG Dream and their whole entire discography, stand NCG Dream. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, well, my song for the week, I also have to, um, oh, we just, first we of just all, out here. I know, right? We criticized Terika at the beginning and now here yeah, we are. <laughs> But my songs of the week uh, are Love Talk, the <laughs> English version by Wavy, because let me tell you, oh, I'm upset. Me too. And my second song is Me and You by Geminoff mm-hmm. uh, from his latest album. And it's a pop. It's great. So, yes, that was our podcast this week. Carolina, have fun editing this. So whether, <laughs> <laughs> whether you are seeing Ace in a month, you're seeing Super M in four months, you're seeing... 17 in a couple of months whoever is gonna bring out tours or you just saw super m congratulations ah! Terica, you lucky bitch make sure you always <laughs> always fang